a relatively cheap Chinese heated tap from eBay. A few of you have asked about this. I bought one a while back. I haven't taken it to bits. It's most remiss of me. Let's take it to bits right now. So the concept behind this is that in places with a voltage in the region of 200 to 250 volts, it becomes viable to run quite high heating loads from a standard socket. In the case of the UK, we can run up to 3 kilowatts, and I think that's what this is rated at. And if we open this up, this tap, we shall see a heated chamber inside, which basically has a heating element in it, and this brass thing, or this brass coloured thing, which I'm guessing is the temperature uh, sensor for actually cutting out if it gets too hot. So let's move this bit out of the way. Uh, one other bit about this, uh, this comes off as well. Let's take it completely to bits. So this ring comes off, and uh, then you can remove the tap. It's like a common standard swivel tap, uh, or faucet, as you might see in other parts of the world. Uh, the output of the tap has a spray nozzle, and there are two reasons for this. It's because the water throughput of this is not going to be terribly high if you want natural hot water. And also, it needs a slight back pressure to operate a pressure switch. So let's put that out of the way now we've seen that, and look at this. The water inlet uh, is quite an interesting arrangement. You have the sink, basin, whatever, and you put this through, but there is a little lug that can pop out here. And you can feed the cable through in this side of the uh, sink, and then the rubber seal has a little indent here, and then the other side is a, basically a big washer with an outlet again, so you can basically tuck that in really tightly, and it passes through the sink quite neatly, um, so you've got really just little clutter on top. It's this short loop of cable here, uh, and then the tap on top of the sink. The tap has... Uh, a cold position, you can move it that direction and it will just spray out cold water and varying pressure. And it's got this, uh, it's got the hot section. Now, do you hear that clicking? I thought that was a switch going on and off. It turns out it's not. It's just for audio effect. Uh, the actual switching is done by water pressure. And I can go a little bit further into this. If I uh, unscrew this, for instance... This bit comes off. I wouldn't do this while it's actually in position because you'd, the, at this point there'd be a huge fountain of water in your kitchen. And inside is this sort of, uh, sort of crimp, well, a crimp ring. It's a sort of split ring holding a little gauze in. And that's a sort of water channel in there that diverts up to the direction of the valve here. So let's uh, screw that back on again since it doesn't... Uh, no, let's leave it off. Yeah, let's leave it off, because it means it's going to be so much more compact. So let's start by taking this off, because this is quite interesting. I have explored this in a cursory manner, but not too far. I wanted to see why. Well, I wanted to see why. When you you get that click, but see if you go like that, it only clicks in one direction. I was thinking, is that a dodgy switch? Turns out it's, it's not a dodgy switch. It's just a clicker. So let's uh, bring in this screwdriver. Um, oh, actually, no, I've just thought of something I don't need. I could have used my smaller screwdriver, but uh, this will do. So you take this off, and then this unscrews, and this module pops out, and this is the water diverting module. Shall we take it to bits further? This is probably going to make a huge mess. Yes, it's going to make a huge mess. This is three ports. It's got a water inlet port, which is probably the bottom one here, maybe. And then it's got one that goes straight through into the uh, cavity here without going through the pressure switch. Uh, I'm just trying to work out what's what here. Uh, yep, and it's got this smaller port which then goes to the pressure switch. So when you divert it to the cold position, it just puts the water straight through without activating the pressure switch and it comes out cold. But if you divert it to the hot position, it diverts it into the other channel and that activates the pressure switch when it's high enough. I'm going to regret taking this bit to bits, so let's uh, try and get this out. This Is this going to ping? It may ping. So we've got that little diaphragm there, and then we've got this. Something has just popped off. I think that's the bit that goes click. It is the bit that goes click. Um, and then this... Oh, it's a ceramic valve. Oh, that spring has just popped out, as springs do. It's ceramic. It's two layers of ceramic. That was just stuck together with uh, silicon grease. So this is a ceramic valve that's used for diverting the water flow. 
that's quite interesting. Uh, right, tell you what, since I'm going to lose these bits now, let's get a bag or something and stick them in it. I could just put it together, but I get the feeling it's going to be a bit footry to put together, so let's just stuff it on a bag right now, complete with its little spring. Where is its little spring? Have I lost its spring already? There's a spring. There's a little, there's a little brass bit that goes click. Uh -huh, that bit, and yeah, something like that, and then we'll just put that in there. Yeah, and that, and, yeah, that'll do. So that just leaves what's in the base. Let's shove all that stuff to the side. I can see, looking from the top, that there is a modest diaphragm. I don't think you're going to see that too easily, but there's a circular diaphragm effect. Uh, there are five screws in the base here. And this is where I was thinking, you know, I could pause while I'm taking the screws out because uh, some of you don't like the the time it takes to get these screws out. But you know what? See if you're taking this together to apart yourself or putting it together. Uh, it's quite useful to see every single bit in the sequence. So these are all valuable things. I can already tell you that this is a fairly large drainage hole where the water supply goes in, and these are also little drainage holes in case water does ooze internally around the electric so it can drip out again, which is reasonable enough. At least they're embracing the fact that you could get a slight water leakage. And they're doing something about it. Now, I will say 3 kilowatts, it sounds quite high power, but having used uh, building site water facilities where they've got the little heated water spout uh, above the sink, I can tell you that 3 kilowatts doesn't do much to heat the water at all. You, you turn it on and you have to wait, there's a delay while it heats up, you know, because it has to heat the mass of this element. Um, and then the water, you have to turn the water very low to get any warmth, particularly in winter. Perhaps it's okay in summer. Um, so what I'm seeing here, the diaphragm is pushing a contact down here. There is no click contact, it's just a soft contact. The live is going via that contact, it's being switched. The neutral is going to here. The earth is going to the metal uh, housing of the element, which is good. These two are the terminal posts of the element. There's a, across them is a resistor and what looks like an LED, just to show when the uh, thing's on. I'm not usually keen in the resistor and LED arrangement across the mains, just simple like that, because it usually involves this resistor getting quite hot. But having said that, it's not going to be running for very long periods of time. This is not something you want to fill your sink with to wash dishes because it would take a very long time because it would just basically be dribbling into the sink. We do have electric showers in the UK. I will be taking a British electric shower apart in the near future. It's uh, on its way from eBay. I used one, I just thought, let's get a used one and take it to bits. Uh, so the cable relief is out. Uh, what else comes out here? I'm going to have to take the terminals off the heating element, I think. So let's grab some pliers and get them off. This is when it's quite useful for this video for me to be able to see how it goes back together again. Not that I'm really planning on using this because I do know the limitations of the instantaneous water heaters. I use an under sink water heater in my kitchen, which is very good, but uh, it's a bit problematic. It tends to go through its elements quite quickly, and I don't mean it burns them out. It develops uh, a slight water ingress to the elements and causes the RCD or GFCI to trip for the house. A uh, while back, they seem to have a major problem with that. Even the elements aren't being used to excess. They last for about two years before they corrode and uh, give problems. I've got a different brand on its way because that happened recently. I should mention there are two types of water heater commonly used, vented and unvented uh, electric water heaters. The vented ones uh, op operate like this. Basically, they rely on the fact that there's never going to be any high pressure in there because the water has been gated into it and then it just goes out the tap. Uh, you could not put a hose adapter in this. If you put a hose adapter in this and blocked it, this would then go up to full mains water pressure inside and the heating element would just jam on all the time, so it's not suitable for that. Let's uh, get these little washers off here. Uh, I, probably, I was saying something else there and I've just forgotten what I was saying. 
that's okay. That's what I do quite a lot. Uh, what was I saying? There's the LED. Oh, another thing I noticed, this little red plug here is just a little rubber bung. I think it's just, let's poke it. I think it's just a little pressure bung. I can't really. Yeah, it's just a little rubber bung. It's designed to blow out if it does get over pressurized. And that means that if the pressure belt built up so high that it blew that bung out, then the water would be spraying out in your kitchen, which isn't terribly handy. Uh, and it would at least uh, not mean it would just be heating up continually. Although it should have a thermal cutout. This is where we're going to hopefully find the thermal cutout. Another thing worth noting here is that the, when the base comes off, there's a little sealing uh, silicon uh, rubber ring in there, which then mates onto this. Uh, I think this is about to lift out. Is it about to lift out? Is it going to come out? Pliers. Uh, I may have to take the mains cable out. Okay. Mains cable coming out. More screws. It's total destruction. Oh, that's the live connection going on to the uh, switch contact, which is now probably completely free. Oh yeah, it's all coming out now. This is good. I'm still trying to remember what I was talking about. I'll, I'll find out when I was uh, when I review the video afterwards. But the undersink water, the vent, oh yeah, vented and unvented. Oh, there's the plunger. Right, okay, what, what have we got here? I've see I've been distracted again. Vented and unvented. The unvented ones are operate at full mains pressure. It's usually a metal chamber. That my preference is for vented because it means that if they ever rupture in any way, then the only time water is going to come out is when you turn the tap on. Is this going to be a one-shot thermal fuse or is this going to be a resettable fuse or is it going to be both? It's, it's not coming out. I may actually have to unscrew that. Oh, that's a bit annoying. Here's the plunger that actually pushes that switch in. And uh, there's the switch. It's not a click action contact. It's this contact down here being pushed up by that plunger, uh, which means that if the water pressure was just in the borderline, it could actually pull away quite slowly from that. Okay, let's see if we can get this out. I like the local water heater I've got under the kitchen sink because it means that from the point you, you go into the uh, kitchen in the morning and you turn the tap and instantly there's hot water. There's no delay at all. It's like it's instantly there. You don't have to wait for it to come through from the main heating system of the house. And you know that thing where you turn the water on that just it takes ages for it to come through and it's cold until it finally gets through and then it starts getting warmer because it's heating all the pipes up in the way. The nice thing about the instant, uh, the not the instant, the storage, the under sink storage heater, is that although it's not perfect for all applications, it does always provide instant hot water and it's very, very efficient. There's very little losses in terms of uh, heating the pipe work on the way there. It's incredibly efficient and they're very well thermally insulated inside as well mainly with polystyrene and plastic housings, so they're a bit of an inferno causer as well if they uh, had an electrical malfunction, but they usually get plenty of uh, thermal protection for that. I'm very intrigued to see what the thermal protection is in this. I'm wondering, I'm hoping this isn't just a one-shot fuse, that would be very disappointing. But on a plus note, it looks like, uh, if I can get this out, it looks like it is going to be replaceable. This is not coming out easily. It's quite a lot of threads. Uh, is this also acting as a seal? I suppose it is actually. It's physically welded onto the heating element. Now I have to say, see where it's welded on? That's where the wow back heating elements seem to go. They, it seems to be a reaction between the metals, but they, those ones, oh, this does look kind of welded on, doesn't it? But I can see a coppery deposit in that as well, as if they've kind of plated it. I'm not really sure. This is not coming out easily, is it? It's lots and lots of threads, and it's actually quite stiff, suggesting there is a seal. If I'd known this was going to happen, I'd put a wee message up uh, 
saying you can skip over, but I can't leave those annotations anymore on YouTube. They're kind of moving away from the leaving set of messages in the video. Here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> That's not very helpful. <laughs> oh, and it's got a thermal compound all over it. What does it say on this? 120 degrees centigrade. Is it resettable? Does it reset? Am I going to have to test this? Is it going to trip and that's going to be it? Is there any other protection? Is it a thermistor that's going to go higher? I wouldn't think it would be a thermistor. I wonder if this is a one-shot. There's no indication that tells you if it is one-shot. It looks, if this fails, if this cuts out, it's going to be pretty terminal. I'm not sure this is. Um, well, there's one way to find out, and that's to try and trip it. Okay, right. So, heat gun. Heat hot air gun. Am I going to be able to heat this up enough, or is this going to be a long-winded thing? Tell you what, I'm going to pause the video now and start it again once uh, I've worked out if this is going to work or not. Okay, well here's the continuity meter, and I'm heating this up, I'm not sure, I'm going to actually put this up to about 300 degrees Celsius. Uh, we'll see at what point this trips. Not sure, but I'm not going to be able to actually tell you the exact temperature it trips. Uh, but is it going to reset? I get the feeling it's not going to reset. Is this a positive temperature coefficient thermistor? Is it going to go high resistance? It kind of went high resistance. Is it going to reset is the question. I'm going to be so disappointed if this doesn't reset. Let's wind the temperature on this one down. Uh, let's put this back to my usual temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, uh, 200 degrees. There we go. Is this going to reset when it cools down? Or is it now completely and utterly dead is the question. I have a horrible feeling that this is now completely and utterly dead. Let's use a pair of pliers as a heat sink on it, just sink some of that heat away from it. Now, there's a couple of possibilities here. It could be a potted thermistor, positive temperature coefficient thermistor, or it could be a single shot fuse. If it's a single shot fuse, then it has single shot. And if this meter doesn't go back to uh, the continuity, then that means that I've just killed this entire product, so I'm not sure uh, where I'd get a thermal fuse ex of this particular style. Okay. Right, well, let's go further. While this is uh, cooling down, let's go further into this if we can. Can we go further into this? Am I going to be able to get any more of this out? Or is... Let's uh, try and get the diaphragm out. Guessing this might rotate. It does rotate. So here's the diaphragm mechanism. The rubber diaphragm that pushes down. Am I going to be able to get that out or is that locked in? Oh, no, no, there we go, there we go. Yeah, it just basically has a little water vent in there and it pushes this diaphragm down and pushes this plunger out to actually switch the power on. That's all that's involved in that. Uh, this is still quite hot. Uh, it's still not resetting. Out of a horrible feeling, I've just killed this whole thing. Yes, I probably have, but that's okay. That's why we got it. In a way, if it does kill it decisively like that, that's a good thing. It means there is proper thermal protection. But it means that if you did block the outlet, uh, or did something like... Uh, uh, yeah, blocking the outlet is probably the only thing you could really do with that, to stop the water flow of the heater running. Or if the contacts welded together in some way, which would be a pretty terminal situation. I get the feeling this thing is not... Yeah, that temperature's gone way down now. I get the feeling it is just a single shot, quite robust thermal fuse. Okay. So, in a way, that is good protection then, if it's actually going to be able to properly isolate uh, the mains from this. <coughs> if it is dead, I shall open this and we'll take a look inside and see what it's like as well. But that's it. 
pretty much this covered. Uh, the water comes up this central pipe, gets diverted through to here. The tap diverts it either through the cold side, which just puts the water straight in. You can actually see the hole at the bottom here. It's, you're probably not going to see it because of the contrast. Uh, or it puts it via this diaphragm, which the diaphragm must have just a little sort of leakage area for the water to come out, which I can't see. Um, which would then pressure, unless, oh, unless it actually di diverts to both those. It might divert to both those. One diverting the water straight in here, but the other one also diverting it to the diaphragm. Um, and that's what turns the, the heater on until somebody screws it up with this. Okay, one moment, please. Right, well, since I've killed it anyway, we might as well go the full hog because this is a thermal fuse. I'm going to put it into the vice of knowledge and we shall crush it and see what's inside. I'm guessing a spring and a, a low melting point alloy. This, the vice of knowledge might not actually open this. I may have to... Oh no, it's making plaintive scrunching noises and cracks are appearing. It's, it's definitely looking quite exciting. Oh, that's, that's definitely gone ping round. Is this going to fragment everywhere? Uh, there's a sort of compound inside. I think I'm going to have to crush it a bit more. Hold on, I shall zoom up a, just a little bit at the moment so you can get all the crunchy goodness here. It's making more crunching noises. It is quite tough, I have to say. Uh, where are my big pliers? Let's use the big pliers to crunch into it. More misuse of industrial tools. So what have we got here? I'm seeing one wire coming in. I'm seeing a sort of filler compound. Is it just an alloy? I'm seeing the wires and then I'm seeing a spacer up the middle. It makes me wonder if it was a low melting point fusible link between those. In which case it's a modest, it's a modest separation that seems to have cleared completely in the process. So it has been, you know, it's been a proper thermal fuse, if that's the case. This is all very reassuring for a product that could get quite thermal otherwise. That is completely clear. I'm guessing there must have been a link over the top of this. Is it this soldery stuff? Is this actually a low temperature solder? It's very roundy and blobby, so it could well be that I've actually, at 120 degrees Celsius, the sort of basically almost like a solder link between the two sides over that little spacer in the middle, has actually just melted and pulled away. I can't see anything else to actually reveal any other information. That's quite sticky and gooey. That's quite unpleasant in there. So, uh, zooming out again, let's do a quick summary. <coughs> It appears, I'll just throw the vice of knowledge down onto the floor here. It appears that, uh, so the water comes in through here, uh, joins onto this base which has the filter screen in it. It comes in here and couples onto this and gets diverted to the output uh, here, this uh, tap mechanism. The tap mechanism does appear to either just channel the water to the cold outlet or when turned to the hot position, it channels to the cold outlet and it bridges it to the diaphragm position which then brings the uh, the heater on when you get the back pressure caused by the spray nozzle here providing resistance to the water flow. Uh, that brings on, it, that causes the diaphragm to flex up and pushes this contact. It's not a snap contact, but it's, you know, it's reasonable enough. It's very big contacts. Uh, copper with a plating on the surface. And there, I noticed something else. There's a little brass stud in here and the only reason I can think that's there is to match this threaded hole. It looks as though it's designed to take a small grub screw so you can fine tune that to lift this, the height of this contact up for this point it turns on. But they've obviously decided that's not needed. 
Um, so that uh, shunts it across. That brings the heating element, powers the heating element, uh, and also lights the LED, which is across the heating element. Um, and that's fundamentally it. If it gets too hot, this brass-ish tube, is it plated metal or is it actually... It's... That feels like stainless steel. It's very lightly magnetic. The brass wasn't attracting the magnets at all, so I guess that is brass. Uh, so if under extreme circumstances, failure mode, like the switch failed, or you blocked the outlet of this and that little safety vent didn't let enough water go through to actually, well, spraying water all over your kitchen in the process, uh, to keep the element cool, then it, when it reaches a temperature of about 120 degrees Celsius, it will then cut off and it'll, that's your product kind of dead at that point, unless you can get a new thermal fuse. It seems okay. In relative terms, unless it leaks or anything, which uh, I haven't really been able to test it and won't be able to test it now, uh, it, it seems, to all intents and purposes, it seems quite acceptable. It seems like it's been quite sensibly designed. So yeah, interesting. I'm not sure I'd use this in a high value house, particularly if an insurance claim they were gonna say, I got it for 20 quid off eBay. But you know, for out in a workshop somewhere where you just wanted to take the chill off the water when you're washing your hands, you just wanted to nudge the, the edge off it and just warm it slightly uh, to avoid uh, your hands turning all blue and crunchy under the ice cold water, then this might actually be quite a viable option uh, as opposed to the little storage heaters. It's quite an interesting little device.